What is going on? Today I've got yet another 10 minute teardown here. And today I'm going to be looking at an oldie but goodie. This is a Motorola Platinum Series, otherwise known as a super old time brick cell phone. So, let's take a look. Wow. And here's the best feature. So unfortunately when it's powered on, I don't know the code. There's some three letter code that you need to press and I have no idea what it is. So that's that. On the back there's a sliding battery with this weird pushy tab. So you slide that off. And it gives all the information. This is the model 13005. And the best part here, I'll zoom in. The basic entire user manual is also on a sticker behind the battery. So you've got the directions to unlock, call, answer, end call. It's pretty comical actually. And the battery is a nickel cadmium. So that tells you how dated this is. Definitely not a lithium. So, how's this guy actually held together? It looks like there's at least one screw. This looks like a hex screw. And I would venture a guess that there's something under these labels, but I'm not so sure. So I feel something right here that feels like it might be a screw. Aside from that, there's some push clip or clip looking things here that I'm gonna have to investigate and see what's going on. So it looks like I was right about these two screws here. And then after that, you just slide it out, and as you squeeze to the side, pop the clips out, and boom. Okay, so after that, we just slide and lift, and there you have it. Interestingly enough, this whole thing is like a giant old-school RF can. So the inside of this plastic back cover is painted with a bit of metallic paint. And then here we can actually see these press-on basically RF seals. Um, it seems incredibly overkill based on the insides of phones nowadays, but keep in mind this is one of the earliest sets of mobile phones, and so uh, they had a hard time with a lot of this RF stuff. Okay, so on the front side here, this is board number one of two. And we can see actually a whole bunch of surface mount components, which is pretty interesting. Given that this phone is pretty old, I would say manufactured in the early to mid 1990s. So seeing this many surface mount components almost exclusively indicates that this was not cheap. There are quite a few quad flat pack uh, surface mount ICs here, all Motorola branded, and so I'm sure they are all custom or semi-custom silicon. You can see the gold borders. Actually, this is where those RF gaskets on the back side make contact just to seal off individual parts. So we've got this guy. My guess is this is some sort of power amplifier. It is canned, but interestingly enough, the can looks like Swiss cheese. So I don't really know what the point of that is. There's a interesting, it's like a quad flat, no lead, but there's actually like a small substrate underneath it that it's soldered onto so it's like they couldn't deal with it on the PCB so they had to put like a little daughter board on there. A whole bunch of passives and discrete semiconductors. This looks like an oscillator and then the interesting section which I think is the modem. So this looks like a modem. It's on a module style guy and the close proximity to both the big honkin' antenna as well as what look like smaller antennas or perhaps balanced transformers um, say to me that it's probably the modem. And so you can see some routing from this guy out to here and then there's actually a lead that comes up into this antenna for the contact. Interestingly enough, I think these guys 
are some sort of ceramic antenna and or transformer. If I lift this up from the side, you can actually see their 3D there. It's hard to see, but they're 3D with what look like microwave circuits on them. So these are these are pretty interesting. These are definitely something that you don't find in modern cell phones, although a modern cell phone also isn't cram-packed with so many discrete semiconductor components. It's really just modems, chips, and some some capacitors, really, maybe some resistors. But And we've got the battery connector and the charging plug. So on the back side, it's also fairly interesting. We have a surface mount board to board connector. This guy connects the main board, which looks like the processing board to the touchpad, as well as the microphone and speaker, which we'll look at in a minute here. We've got the back side of this connector. We have a couple of grids. Uh, these look like they might actually be debug grids. So test points and or jumpers that can be configured for development or manufacturing testing. More Motorola silicon, so one, two, three, four, five Motorola quad flat pack chips here. The LCD, so <laughs> it's cute, it's kind of angled for the front panel. Just some power supplies, it looks like, as well as some caps. And we've actually got two part numbers. The only two part numbers I could identify on this board are two Atmel parts, they're both memories. This is a one-time programmable read-only memory and this is an 8K EEPROM. So very, very likely these are providing configuration data for the processing on these. Probably also storing phone numbers, configuration. I honestly don't even remember what the feature set of this phone is, but this is probably firmware code and these might be user settings. And Who this knows? is the second board. So this is home to the keypad as well as the speaker and microphone. Interestingly enough, the microphone and speaker are both hand soldered and actually wired out to a separate assembly. So apparently it seemed to make more sense to hand wire these and mount them in than extend the board or do a ribbon cable or some sort of wiring connector. So I thought that was kind of an interesting decision. We've also got what looks like a small power supply this guy's marked 349, but it looks like a either an LDO or a FET. These are, they, they look funky, but these are actually LEDs, I believe, for the keyboard backlight, as well as the microphone. And I think there's a microphone up here too. I don't know. But yeah, this board is pretty simple. I'm not gonna peel back the keyboard connector because they're the, flat buttons with the carbon, uh, the little carbon conductive pads on them. And once you take those off, putting them back on is a nightmare. If you get any oil or anything, they're pretty much ruined. And even, <laughs> even though I don't use this phone on a daily basis, I would like the buttons to at least work, mainly just because it's kind of a relic at this point. So honestly, for such a complex product, it's almost uh, hilariously simple in terms of boards. It's a little bit disappointing, mainly because there's so much custom silicon in here. I can almost guarantee there's no way that any of us are ever going to find any info on these micros or chips, which is a little bit of a bummer because it's kind of nice to be able to dig in and, and see what's going on. But probably the most impressive thing for me here is to look back at this and think about how all of this has been integrated into one modern, basically one modern chipset. Um, both Apple, Samsung, Qualcomm, all the big players pretty much either roll their own or run with an off-the-shelf system on a chip. And it really combines all of these various functions into one chip that's literally smaller than you know one of these. And so it, it really is cool to think about how much more integrated and rolled together these phones have become and it's such a huge market every year that the phone manufacturers, the chip manufacturers, everyone continue to further the integration and roll more into these. So that's probably the biggest thing for me just looking at this is thinking about how far along we've come. And not to mention that the logic board on a modern iPhone is like tiny. I mean, it's pretty much like a little sliver of this guy. And 
you know, who knows how many layers the PCB actually is, but the fact that all of this stuff can be rolled into one board is really pretty crazy. And so, yeah, uh, this one was pretty quick, pretty basic. There wasn't a lot of back research I could do on any of these chips, but I hope you still found it enjoyable. And yeah, thanks for watching.